Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is part two of our series. And uh, we were talking about how about 10,000 of the uh, non-Muslims came down to Medina thinking that this will be the end of Islam and Muslims. Um, one of the things that we learned that when the Prophet Sallallahu knew uh, about the plot that they are coming with all this large forces to Medina, these allied forces as they were called, the Ahzab. He sought Shura with his companions as was his practice, especially in moments of battle. He would always seek uh, Shura with his companions. Salman al-Farsi radiallahu an, he suggested an old Persian tactic and that was to build a trench around Medina. You dig a trench, because remember there was no aerial uh, battle at that time. Everything was on land. And so when the army come, they will be stuck. They cannot come into the city. So it shows how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is a brand new idea. It's a brand new idea, even though it was at a very, you know, pressing time. The Prophet Sallallahu embraced these new ideas. So imagine if he was living in our time, how new ideas, so long as they're beneficial to the Muslim community, he would have embraced those new ideas. Today we seem to be stuck with, uh, oh, it has to be done that way. No, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam embraced a brand new idea. And this is, you know, it's hard work. And subhanAllah, it was a very momentous task and they had to build a trench around Medina and all they had was 20 days. No one complained. The only people who complained were the hypocrites. You know, the true believers worked hard towards that goal. And as an Islamic movement, this is a great lesson for us. At crunch time, it is not time to waste our good time bickering with one another, but literally get down to work and not to complain, but to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things that uh, was very momentous was that there was a rock that was difficult to break. And so the companion sought the help of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he came and the first rock he said, in Allah a'tani mulku faris, that Allah has just given me the, the keys or the treasures of, of Persia. And these were, this is not Quraysh, this is an empire. So you can imagine you're in the middle of, of something strenuous, hard work, and here it is, Prophet is saying, we, I've just been given the keys or the wealth of, of an empire. And the second one, he talked about Rome, which was at that time the, in Syria. The, so I have just been in Allah Atani Mulk Rome, that I've just been given the, the, the treasures of the Roman Empire, basically. And this was one of the greatest empires in history. And the third, he said, in Allah Atani Mulk Yemen, that Allah has given me the, the keys or the wealth of Yemen. And my dear brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, it was just a matter of few years that all of these came to pass. Allahu Akbar. Now, the hypocrites, they, when they heard that, they mockingly, mockingly he, they were saying, oh, he's promising all this glory and one of us are afraid to go use the washroom right now. So what kind of promise is this? You know, when you're a hypocrite, you have so many doubts in what Allah has revealed, so many doubts on his messenger. And the sign of hip the hypocrites is so glaring that they were afraid of everything, as Allah says, is yakulul munafiquna walladina fi qulubihim maradun ma wa'adana Allahu wa rasuluhu illa ghurura. So when the hypocrites and those in whose heart is a disease of doubts, they say Allah and His Messenger وسلم, promise us nothing but delusion. This is the way hypocrites behave. As members of an Islamic movement, 
this is the last thing we should start to do putting fear in the in the mind when there is crunch time things that has to be done may allah save us from that and inshallah we will continue assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah